Time now for another edition of the panel brought to you by Sport Check. Gazola, Michaels, and Stoffer coming at you from Rexall Place. Uh, guys, the Oilers wrap up a disappointing six game homestand that sees them win just one game uh, and end it with uh, a five game slide the first time this season that the Oilers find themselves in this situation. Just how difficult was it in those last five games to watch and maybe for the team as a whole? Well, I think what we saw on this particular homestand was the difference between a team teetering on the edge of playoff competition and a team that's kind of playing out the string. I mean, the Edmonton Oilers were facing some desperate hockey teams that need to put these points in the bank. And you've heard Todd McClellan talk about teams that are playing to the finish, that absolutely need these points, and how much more difficult the season gets in the final two months of the year. And I think that's what Edmonton faced. And as a result, the Oilers found themselves chasing the game far too often at the tail end of this homestand. Getting behind and when you're struggling like the Oilers are and you don't get that first goal and you're not able to maintain a lead at any point in the game, uh, you expend a lot of energy chasing and trying to get back into it. And I think the energy has tapered off to some degree over the last seven to ten days. Uh, Bob, how concerning is it uh, on a day when the GM comes out and says, yes, changes are looming, uh, there is a game that night and then that's what we see what does that say about the group? Well, I think when the head coach in his post-game comments references the fact that he's concerned, that's pretty concerning. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's clear that there's some other players playing with a lack of confidence right now. Uh, and I, 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 I think that there's guys that saw themselves as being part of the solution here. And uh, that might be fleeting for a couple of the players that maybe three or four years ago we would have never thought uh, might be poten potentially movable here uh, at, uh, at this deadline. And I, I actually think that until we get to the deadline, there's there's going to be some guys really fight it. Because to me, this has been going on for a little bit of a while. And once we get past that upcoming deadline, I actually think the team might settle down a bit. And it, But it is, uh, the power play is not going. They're not generating a lot from the back end right now. That's a given. they got challenges there. Uh, they've got two of the wrong guys hurt in terms of Nugent Hopkins and Clefbaum, who last year were their best player and their best defenseman as they finished the year. Uh, but they got to overcome it. It doesn't matter. You're still, everybody else has an opportunity to step up. And unfortunately, there haven't been enough guys that have stepped up. Uh, there's still games left to play uh, over a month and a half of action here. And the Oilers head into a, a quick two-game, two-night trip uh, against two of the toughest teams in the league right now. Just uh, let's take a peek ahead to L.A. Thursday and, of course, the Ducks on Friday. Well, one of the bright spots against the Ottawa Senators on Tuesday night was the play of Jordan Osterley, who was making just his seventh NHL appearance and was paired with Brandon Davidson, who in my mind has been the Oilers' best and most consistent defenseman for some time right now. And I think that helps settle Jordan Osterley's game right now. But what I'm curious about, Tom, is how he'll stack up against big, rugged teams like LA and Anaheim. And it's not just Jordan Osterley. It's going to be uh, some of the other bright spots. Will Zach Cassian be able to match some of the physicality that you often get with those teams. He was unavailable in the last game against the Anaheim Ducks, and I think his absence in the lineup was sorely missed. So what I'm curious about, Bob, is whether the Oilers will be able to match the physical intensity with two teams in the hunt for a Pacific Division title, currently separated by just two points, that are going to need those wins and, and whether some of the bright spots we saw against the Ottawa Senators will be able to hold up on the road in what figures to be a difficult back to back against two of the best teams in the league. You know, I get the sense that some of the older players right now are there's a fear of failure for some, not all of them, but fear of embarrassment might, and I mean this, if they're and not. And that might work in their favor. That might work in their favor. And, you know, you take a look at how those two teams play hard, firm, competitive, simple games. And the others in this homestand, too many turnovers, too soft on pucks, turn it over too many times in the neutral ice area. As a result, second chance opportunities. Edmonton has to really bear down and simplify their game and compete and let the chips fall where they're there. Uh, a chance to atone uh, in Southern California. It won't be easy. The Oilers in action against the Kings and then the Ducks. Uh, 8.30 p.m. Uh, face-off uh, from L.A. Jack and Bob, as always, have the call for you. Chris Westcott has you covered right here on EdmontonOilers.com.